Hello everyone, this is Hello Carthage, and today I kind of want to bring you a, basically a what not to do in Medieval 2 Total War. Um, this battle, the reason why I want to show you this battle is because uh, my opponent, um, I don't know if he was new, or uh, I'm not really sure what was going on, but um, he ended up making a lot of mistakes that I just kind of want to point out to you guys and say, hey, um, this really isn't the way um, to play um, this kind of game. And just, you know, before I start, I just want to say I'm not trying to put him down in any way. I'm just wanting to use his mistakes to show you guys um, just things that you can avoid doing when playing these kind of games. Just to, uh, just kind of, you know, uh, just make sure you do well when you play these games. So anyways, um, I'm going to go over the army uh, compositions first, just like I always normally do. And uh, this was actually an early period battle, so you're not going to have a lot of the, you're not going to have, you know, Knights Hospitaller or Tufog Knights or any of that. So, um, this is actually kind of, it was kind of fun to be able to do that. But anyways, um, my army consists of, on my flanks, I have two units of armored, hop, armored sergeants, sorry, I'm used to Rome, uh, armored sergeants, and I have a total of four of those, like I said, two on each flank. In the middle, I have four units of these dismounted feudal knights. And then behind them, for my archer force, as you can see, they've already started moving. Um, I have, I believe, five units of these Sherwood archers. The reason why I chose to bring Sherwood archers is because, well, mainly because um, it's an early period battle, and I had access to them, which was great. And even though they only have half the unit amount, um, I know that in an early period battle, they're going to highly outclass um, almost any other archer that can be brought against them in both range and armor piercing. So that's the main reason why I brought them. And behind them, for my cavalry force, I have four units of feudal knights and one general's bodyguard, and my general is right there. And now my opponent, he was playing his France uh, on his wings. He has two units of mailed knights for a total of four, and then his general is in a unit of feudal knights here, right there. And then for his infantry, well, first his missile units, he brought six units of peasant archers, and then behind them he has, I believe, four units of armored sergeants, and behind them five units of dismounted feudal knights, uh, four right behind, and one back here. Alright, so before I even uh, get the battle going, I want to point out, um, really, uh, not not even really, um, well, one is kind of a problem, two others are just kind of uh, things I noticed right away that where he was uh, outmatched against me. So, um, right away, I noticed that he brought male knights, and so right there, I know I outclass him in that, as my cavalry is better than his. Uh, the second thing I noticed was that he, br he brought peasant archers, and in my opinion, never bring peasant archers to a uh, multiplayer battle, because um, peasant archers are not good archers, they just aren't. And the other thing about peasant archers is they don't have armor piercing, which means um, and almost unless you're facing like other archer units that aren't armored, um, any armored unit is going to be basically unaffected by these guys because um, their arrows cannot get through the enemy's armor. So uh, that's the main reason. Like they're basically useless against any sort of armor unit, um, whether archer or infantry. And so basically, just don't bring peasant archers for that reason. And so um, I, I know that, and also they have horrible range. And so that's the second thing I noticed is that uh, even though he brought a ton of archers, they really have almost no range compared to mine. Uh, my guys highly outclass his, and my archers have armor piercing, which means they are also a danger to his own infantry. And then the third thing I noticed, and this is kind of the problem, especially with his infantry, is that his men are not um, upgraded. And if you go over to my army over here, my infantry, as you can see, are upgraded. They have, um, I gave them 
uh, attack upgrade and a defense upgrade, which is why you see these guys in, uh, oh, what's the word, uh, like basically metal armor instead of just chain mail. And then uh, you can see that these armored sergeants are in chain mail armor, whereas over here, my opponent, his armored sergeants are still just in leather. And um, his field knights are in chain mail rather than full heavy armor. So um, that's kind of the problem is it was equal amounts of money on both sides. And since he actually brought worse um, units than I did, uh, when it, he should have had plenty of money left over to upgrade his uh, infantry. So that's the kind of the problem there that I see. And so that's something you want to avoid. I mean, if you have money to upgrade your men, uh, do it. I guess that's. And usually you will, unless it's like a super low money battle. You should have money left over to at least upgrade some of your men. It will definitely help. So that was the main problem at the start of the battle. But and those, the other two things are just things I noticed immediately. That. Um, Maybe think that maybe I outclassed him in terms of uh, manpower. So I'm gonna roll my archers, and at first, um, things my opponent my opponent does make sense. I mean, he's gonna move up a little bit, try to get closer, but then he starts to make some really weird movements um, that I still have no idea why. You guys are probably gonna be scratching your heads afterwards too. In any case, I move my archers, and already, I mean, I barely move them up. And already, they're in range. As you can see, they're about to fire. Especially over here, these archers are getting shot apart. So he's going to move them, and this is where his uh, movements start to get a little weird. First, it just seems like he's shifting over a little, which makes sense. I mean, I guess. Then now he's bringing this cavalry over. Then he stops them here, and they're just facing inward. Which was like, okay, they're not really facing me. And then he brings uh, this cavalry this way, and this is where I'm just kind of unsure what he's planning. His now his infantry is just kind of in one large bunch. They're all kind of facing random directions. Uh, he has archers mixed in there. No real order to it. He has cavalry facing random directions. And he's leaving them there. He's not giving them any other orders, even though I'm getting much, much closer. Uh, so this is where it gets, it gets really weird. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm trying to give him time to do something, but I'm going to just... I'm just going to charge into this one. I'm like, well, I'm going to take advantage of this situation since he's all clumped up like this. Uh, and that's the thing. I'm going to pause here quick. You do not want to do this. Um, he's got his men all clumped up, and he's not really giving them any orders to undo this mess. And the problem with this is that uh, if you get your men all clumped up like this, it's very easy to envelop you. And um, if your men are surrounded by all sides, that um, hurts their morale quite a bit and makes it much easier for them to rout. And you don't want that happening, so you don't want to be outflanked, you don't want to be hit from behind, you especially don't want to be enveloped. So it makes it very easy to just be crushed. And as you can see, that's pretty much exactly what happens. Um, and I just, I still have to wonder what he was thinking and why he did this but uh... this you do not want this to happen and he, he also, the other thing is he doesn't really use his cavalry all that well I mean, he has them facing random directions and doing weird things and, and he, he doesn't, he leaves his archers uh... quite unprotected as well especially for bringing so many of them uh... I was just surprised at his movements here Okay, so I'm gonna charge these archers here. They're gonna instantly break. And these archers must have been on skirmish mode because they're all gonna run away. He's gonna get a little bit of a charge counter charge here. But I'm not gonna lose too many. 
I'm gonna choose to just kinda go back in and engage. But here we go, his infantry is all in this nice little clump, just like a perfect target. And here I come charging in. And my men are upgraded, his aren't. And so even armored sergeants against his feudal knights are just gonna stomp him. Uh, I did have a little bit of a mess up here. My men get a little clumped up, and so not and so not all of them are actually fighting him. But I do get enough men around in here. It's very much in our favor. If we remain true and steadfast, victory will be ours. All right, and then here, um, as you see, his men. That's another thing. You don't want cavalry in this kind of formation, long and skinny. Uh, cavalry, you want like I have here. You want as many lances. Um, and as many men facing the enemy as possible so that you get the maximum amount of damage possible. Whereas here, they're all nice and skinny like this. You don't get that. And he's just letting them sit there, which means I get an amazing charge on these guys. And so you can just see them dropping. And my men already are bad men. I do bring these armored sergeants in uh, to help this cab fight, but then I realize I don't really need them. I ain't gonna charge them in the back here. These guys. I'm charging into his flank. And as you can see, I mean, I have him surrounded on three sides, and I am going to hit him from behind. These guys are coming from behind now. Uh, over here, I made a little bit of a mistake in the fact that I let these guys charge these useless archers. But now I'm bringing them back to finish this fight here. But as you can see, his army is starting to rout. He has men fighting to the death. All of Christendom will and be here he admits defeat. the victory we have won here today. I mean, it would have taken me a while to... still would have taken me a little while to slaughter my way through those men, but he realized that there was really no way of, that he was going to fight his way out of that. But uh, anyways, um, I hope you guys... Um, I just learned a little bit of something here. Just and, uh, um, If... And if you're whoever you are, um, whoever I was playing, if you are somehow, if you somehow found this and you're watching it, I would love to know. Uh, just kind of like what what exactly you were thinking. Um, I'm, I'm sure you had some sort of plan in mind. Maybe you were new uh, and you were you just were uh, able weren't able to micro um, as well. But in any case, um, it was still a fun game. I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't get to do early battles that much. In any case, like I said, I hope you guys learned something. Just just uh, don't make those mistakes, especially the main thing I want you guys to take away from this is don't let yourself get enveloped like that. Uh, and I know most players, um, and like I said, I, I don't know what he was thinking or what he was meaning to do, but I, I know most players um, wouldn't let their men get that bunched up like that, but um, you can still uh, get surrounded if you're not careful or if you make some mistakes so I guess that's the main thing uh, and the other thing is um, if you have extra money upgrade your man it's worth it so in any case I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys later